What's going on everybody? My name is Salem Sunni and welcome to my YouTube channel where I help individuals such as yourself be more motivated, discover their purpose and understand that you are God's very best. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Uh, today I want to continue in our series about dual market research. You want to do business in Africa or you're an African who wants to jump into business, here are some tips when you're trying to do your market research. We previously talked about doing studying your competition when it comes to market research, understanding everything that regards that. Watch that previous video is going to help you. Today we're going to be talking about your product or your service. You want to also do some market research when it comes to actually what are you going to be selling or what service are you going to be providing. So one of the first thing you want to determine already is what is your product and also does the market still needs or require your product or service, right? So we're going to be talking about product and services at the same time. So within this regard, uh, let's give an example. For example, you want to be a barber. What is the product that you're going to be or the service you're going to be providing or maybe both. Uh, you want to open a barbershop. Let's say you're in a community where that is needed. There is a service I'm providing is just cutting hair or am I going to be selling some shampoo, selling some, some brushes. I'm not only just providing the haircut as a service, but I'm also selling different products, right? So think about that. Have an exact idea looking at the market in which you are in, what are some of the product or the service that you actually are going to be providing? So that's something you want to be very clear on. Even if you're selling a digital product, if you're selling something online, something um, via any type of platform, you know, whether it's social media platform, anything of that matter, have an exact idea of what are you providing. Let's say, for example, you are a model and you're sure you're seeing African fashion. So in that regard, you have to understand also what is your product. For example, your look, the way you dress, that belongs to, that's what brings you money, right? Uh, let's say if you are in an industry where you're called to speak, understand that speaking then becomes the product or the service that is bringing you money. You want to start a restaurant, for example, uh, understand what type of cuisine are you going to be focusing on, right? Uh, even if it's in Africa, there's still preferences, right? So you want to be studying, okay, what are we going to be focusing on? What are we good at, right? Well, that we're going to be providing. What level of service are we going to be more of a um, typical fast food type of service as a restaurant? Or are we going to be more of a high-end restaurant? So all that you want to have a kind of an exact idea of what type of product or services you're going to be providing. The moment you have a clear understanding of what that is, it helps you in terms of understanding what some of the few other steps you're going to be discussing. Something else that is important also to study whenever you're looking at your product or your service is when you look at the market, does the market want or needs your product? It's important for you to think about this, right? You won't want to study the market, look at the people who've done something uh, within the market itself. Is the product or the service you want to bring into the market still necessary? Is there space for you to grow within that market? Let's come back to the example that I said earlier. You are maybe a barber. You want to open a barber shop. You want to cut hair. Look in your neighborhood. Look within your city. Look within uh, the area within you are. Is there already a lot of existing barbers? If there are already a lot of existing barbers, may, you have to ask yourself a question. Do I really want to still jump in there and have to fight a lot of the competition or do I want to do something different? Because that also could depend on what type of skill sets you might have. You could be like, oh, I'm great at this, right? As a barber, but the competition is so fierce, maybe you could be providing some skills where other barbers aren't providing those skills that is not necessarily cutting hair. Right, so you still stay within the market and the sector that you're effective at, but it might not be cutting hair. I want to be looking, is the market or the, the crowd, is the population, the potential customers and clients that I'm gonna be working with, do they still need my product? Is my product there? Because you could be looking at your product, there's no one there, right? There's no one who's doing what you're doing. So of course, in that particular case, because of the need, yeah, it makes sense, right? Because you've looked at it, no one is doing there. Maybe there's no barbershop where you are. Maybe there's no one who's showcasing African uh, uh, fashion in the manner that you wish was portrayed. Maybe it's for you to jump within that role. 
right? So think about that. Maybe there's not a, a African restaurants or maybe you are in Africa and you want to start a business like a restaurant, but no one is cooking something to a high standard. Everything is low, there's, there's not maybe the delivery or there's not like a high class restaurant. So maybe you're providing something, but look at the market. Does the market, can people afford, for example, coming to a high class restaurant? Something else that's important is studying the gaps. I think often enough, many people when they're doing the market research, you're trying to jump into something because you just want to do it, right? There's nothing wrong with having a desire or a passion to do something. I still believe that you have to connect with whatever the market wants, right? You also have to connect whatever there are empty gaps. I call them gaps. You have to study the gap, right? For example, let's come back to our three main examples. It seems like about starting a barbershop, a model or a restaurant. Let's say if you want to start a barbershop, you want to look within your neighborhood. Are there any gaps, right? For example, there's, if there's no barbershops within maybe a hundred mile radius, so you know that that is a need, right? And by the way, when I say the barbershop, I'm not really only talking to men, it could be also women. You could have a salon, a salon shop. So anything that does with, you know, doing hair, when you look within your area, you could have a, a, a salon to work with women's hair because no one is doing that within that area, so you can open something. Within that case, then your service that you're private, providing with the product, uh, you could easily gain a lot in the market because there's really no competition. Uh, you're gonna be an early adopter. You're gonna have to also deal with some of the challenges of being the first in doing something. So you always wanna keep that in mind. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss more about that when we talk about timing. So this is one of the videos coming up as well. There could be already barbershops existing where you are. There could be barbershops, many of them could be within the, the area where you are. But for example, the barbershops, they're not offering services that maybe some of the clients want within that area of a barbershop. For example, it could be follow-ups, right? You could provide a service to a lot of existing barbershops about doing follow-up to their customers. What you could do, for example, when you study the gaps, you could create a a servicing agency, for example, to have people book their appointments for their haircut. Like, for example, I know that about every two, three weeks, I gotta go get a new haircut. But if, for example, my next haircut appointment was already booked somewhere, somebody would call me when, it, like, a day or two before my appointment, and say, "Hey, Mr. Sony, uh, your appointment with such and such uh, barbershop is coming up. We just wanted to let you know that it is there." That is a great service. That's gonna remind me, I have to now adjust my schedule and all that stuff. That is great, right? Because think about that. How many people sometimes forget and just they come at a desperate time to get a haircut? But when you have, for example, customers who already booked their time, you as a barbershop owner, it helps you also have an idea of how much money you're gonna be making. It, it helps you make better estimations of like, for example, we have um, 100, 200 appointments coming up. Right? So you, you're still staying within the barbershop industry, but you're providing a gap, a service that is not already being met. Or, for example, let's say if you're a salon, you could be providing products. You could find a way, maybe you have connects or contacts, you still love hair, you still love doing uh, working with hair, but a lot of salon owners or beauty shop owners may not have like the connections to get the product at a fair price or something like that. You could become that middleman. So you're still staying within the sector or the industry that you might have some strength or love, but you're providing a gap, right? A need that is not there. Right? You could be doing advertisement, for example, or for local businesses within that area, whether there's beauty shops or barber shops, anything like that, you could be doing advertisement for that. And that kind of like brings me into the second example when we talk about being a model. You could be doing modeling for uh, different uh, African designers. Right, you love modeling. You want to you want to showcase a lot of African uh, fashion and culture. You could be doing specific modeling for African uh, designers who might not get a lot of exposure, maybe due to the, the the following you have on Instagram or the following you have on social media, for example. You could go and you know provide your brand or your service to some designers and say, hey, I want to showcase more of what you guys do. Uh, here's the following we have, and work out a way. You know, you can exchange some services that way. So you're providing a gap because they need exposure as designer because they want more people to buy their product. But you also want to be, you know, you want to get more gigs, more pay. So you also create more relationship. And the better relationship you have, the more requested as a model you would be. Right. So something to think about is very important as a restaurant owner. 
or somebody who wants to jump within the food industry, think about also providing gaps. Cleaning, many restaurants would love a, a services who come to make sure that the restaurants are clean. You will be surprised how many restaurants would love somebody who specializes in cleaning restaurants. That's just an idea that just came to the top of my head. That's actually a brilliant idea. I don't, I don't know if there are services that do that in Africa or for African businesses. You can specialize in cleaning African restaurants. You know the amount of grease to do it. You're very familiar with the type of food that they cook. You're very familiar with cleaning, right? So you could be something like, okay, I want to provide a service that focuses on targeting African restaurants or African uh, business owners who are in the food industry who want the cleaning. They don't want to be doing the cleaning themselves. We'll provide that service for you. So you're providing again a gap. Like how many people, you in a restaurant and it's dirty, you want to, nobody wants to deal with that themselves, right? You could provide a, a service that does that. Maybe you could provide a service that comes and wash the dishes. It seems kind of like dumb, but think about it, right? You, the dishes have to be clean. So if you're a restaurant owner, instead of paying, you know, so many people extra hours to stay, you could provide a pay service that comes that take care of all the dishes, all the utensils, you know, you want to vet them, make sure that they're good. So you could be providing that gap. Again, it's all about studying the gap. What is, there, is not being done right now within the industry that you could provide your service or your product to? That is a game changer.